So goals, you can see how broad it is. It says we want to establish our brand in social media. How are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? Where are we going to do it? All that will come in objectives. So want to get 1,000 Facebook fans, Twitter followers, um, and this, this 1,000 having a particular number to it is key. Because if it says we just get Facebook fans, that's not specific like an objective should be. All right, the strategy will be provide reasons for people to become Facebook fans. Then the tactics will be offer special deals, share news and bars, find and follow relevant people in order to do this. Tweet and retweet regularly. So this is an example of how that looks like in real life. A typical matrix organizational structure groups employees into two ways. So this is where employees have two buses simultaneously to maximize the rate at which different kinds of products can be developed. So matrix would say, okay, I can be the, and this happened to me before. Um, so I was working in HR and then I was drafted. I didn't leave my HR department, but I was drafted to what is called a cross-functional team, a CFT. So in that cross-functional team, we had a project. It was called a clinic. And so every support function, so all the other support functions, HR, admin, finance, and all of that, you had people that were drafted into that cross-functional team. And then we had a project manager in that cross-functional team. So I invariably had two bosses. I had my normal HR department boss. And then I also had the project manager boss for that cross-functional team where we were having that project going on. So maybe like two or three hours in the day, I would go to that project, we'll talk, talk, have meetings and all of that. And that way I had to give, um, I had to give an account to both the project manager as well as give account to my HR manager with the work that I was doing in both places. So that's what a matrix structure looks like. Employees are literally working in two different areas, usually their main function and also a project function. And it says different kinds of products or services can be developed. So you have vertically by function and horizontally by product or project. Which of the following is a potential pitfall of a differentiation strategy? Let's see. Differentiation strategy, I said, is where you decide that you're going to provide something unique. No one else has stuff like that as different, as distinct, and all of that. So a good example is Apple. Apple, they've created their products in such a way like it has a differentiation strategy. No one can have an Apple phone like an Apple phone. No one can create a MacBook like a MacBook. No, you know what I mean? Like if we're just hearing the terms, I watch Apple, this and everything, it seems like, oh, there's something unique about it. So that's kind of the strategy they use. And when you create something unique like that, you're able to charge a premium price. You're able to charge a higher price and people are willing to pay because they believe they have something of very high quality or very unique. It's not just a regular thing. And the pitfall or the disadvantage could be that you have too high a price premium. If it's too high, some people could be like, you know what? I don't think I want to afford that. I don't think I want to pay for that. You know, And so that could be a disadvantage. Members of the board of directors are supposed to be agents. Remember, principal agent. They're supposed to be agents for the stockholders because they are the, the stockholders are the ones that own the company. If you buy shares in a company, you're a stockholder. You own a portion of that company, even if it's 0.00%. You own a portion of that company. Now, those stockholders will come together and decide the board of directors. The board of directors will decide who's going to lead the company and different things like that. Um, but they really are agents. So the principal and the principals are the stockholders. Which of the following is a major function of the board of directors of a company? Aligning corporate strategy with stockholder interest. So that's why they're there. That's why the stockholders put them there. They need to make sure that whatever strategy they have in place, it's, it's in line with the interests of the stockholders.